welcome back. So today I just want to give you a very quick video on how I made this cabinet and it holds all of the accessories for my tonal exercise machine. But what I really want to focus on is how I made my own veneer. So I have a limited supply of this beautiful dark air dried walnut that I was able to get from my neighbor. And um, so I want to make it last as long as I can. So I'm able to make this whole cabinet out of just a little over half of one board instead of a few boards that it would have taken me. So I hope that you enjoy this process. This was my first time veneering and it was really fun. I've done a lot of different veneering since then, but um, cutting my own was still kind of my favorite. These boards are impressively flat, but I milled them so that one edge and one face would be um, flat and square. My dad was in town visiting, and as a kid, I spent a lot of time catching boards for him on the other side of the equipment, so it's got really fun when he's around and we get to build things together, and he can be there to catch boards for me now. So the first boards when I was resawing, I tried to use this little fence that um, is made for resawing, and I've had really good luck with that when I'm trying to like just get down a center of a board. To do really thin stock, though, it, I don't know if it was that or my error, but I wasn't able to get it as um, as clear of a line as I really wanted to. So then we just put together a very quick fence out of some um, melamine and that worked much better. We ran all the pieces through the drum sander. For the door, we ran them to 3 seconds of an inch and for the sides, we did a 16th of an inch. Next, we edge banded everything with walnut and blue tape works just fine for this. In fact, I found that actually the Harbor Freight tape is um, probably not the best for painter's tape, but it definitely is the best for clamping tape. We decided to just use painter's tape since this veneer is really thick. Um, the actual veneer tape seems pretty cool, but it definitely is a lot more delicate and you have to wet it. And as thick as this stuff was, there was no problem with just using the thick tape. It held it together really well and we got beautiful seams. I should also note that once the veneer was sanded down to its final dimensions, we did joint each edge again, and that really helped make for a really tight seam. As tight as these seams are with the tape, I probably didn't need to glue the seams together, but since it was thicker the veneer, I wanted to, you know, take no risk. And so we just applied a little bit of the dark tight bond glue and then put some tape on to hold it tight while it dried. And I'm just applying this with just a little paintbrush. On the outside of the piece, I just leave the tape on and even when it goes into the press and, but the underside that's gonna go against the MDF, obviously I have to take the tape off and then I just use the card scraper to clean up any bit of glue that's squeezed out. I didn't realize just how much stuff was gonna be involved in vacuum pressing. So this is the plate and board and that's a two foot by four foot area of melamine and I have two sleeves in it, one on each side so it can be flipped in either direction. And I bought a full sheet of melamine and made up all four pieces at two foot by four foot so that I could get a four by eight capacity because that's what my bag will hold. But this way I can run it sideways or vertically. Um, so I probably will never actually end up using all four. Even when I did this large walnut um, veneer bar area, I really only under, ever used uh, two pieces at a time, four foot by four foot. In addition to those plate and boards, you also have to have calls on both sides that you're gonna be pressing down. And these can't be any wider than than the thickness of the material that you're using. So I'm using half inch MDF here, so it can't overhang this door by more than half of an inch on any dimension or it can break it off. So if you're doing a lot of different size things, you really do end up going through a lot of MDF. It's also smart to round over the corners a little bit just to help save on your bag. These also must be waxed so that the glue doesn't stick to the culls. I used Titebond cold press glue and it was much thinner than regular wood glue. So there was definitely a learning curve with getting this applied nice and evenly. Uh, the little craft roller worked pretty well, but probably like maybe a four to six inch roller, rubber type roller would have worked even better. I applied the veneer to both the top and the bottom of the door just to make sure that nothing would have a chance to warp. This tape definitely isn't necessary, but since I wasn't sure how well I would do putting it in and out of the bag yet, I decided to tape it together just to assure that I wouldn't have anything shift on me while I put it in. The hose for the vacuum press is uh, put in from underneath into that board, and that's why all those channels are cut into the board so that air will be able to evenly distribute around this. So once I got this in place, I just went ahead and locked the um, the bag shut and then let the press do all the rest of the work. And there's something really satisfying about watching this bag suck this down and um, you just know how many thousands of pounds of clamping pressure you're getting. 
We left this sit in the vacuum press for a couple of hours, and then when we took it out, uh, trying to get the tape off of it, not gonna lie, was a little bit difficult because it was sucked down so tight. So I do understand that that veneering tape you could just wet and then just kind of peel it off, which would probably be a lot easier, but I did like the strength of this tape um, for me to get the hang of doing the veneer anyway. Now you'll notice here on the front of the cabinet door, we did book matching for the grain. And this grain direction is something that I really didn't put enough emphasis on when I started woodworking. And so the other side is still all from that same walnut board, but there wasn't enough to book match it. And this is just gonna be the inside of the door, so it doesn't matter. And although it's pretty, it's amazing to me the difference between when you really spend the time lining up grain compared to when you don't, just how different the product looks. We left the veneer oversized just a little bit in case it would shift while we were putting it into the vacuum press and then this was really easy to take care of with a flush trim router bit. When I was a kid my dad used to refinish wood floors and he'd always get the cool big sander and I'd always be on my hands and knees with the little sander and all the corners so I'd just like to say look who's holding the sander now. One of the major purposes of building this cabinet was to get comfortable with my cool new tools that I was gifted for making that large walnut um, bar. And so I had to get comfortable with them before we started on the bar. And one of those uh, tools is a domino. So it was kind of interesting starting with half inch material. Thicker material would have been a little bit better. And I definitely learned that there is a learning curve, but we were able to install all of the inside pieces uh, with the domino. And it really is a very cool tool. We veneered all of the edge uh, boards as well, and then we put this together with dominoes. And I can honestly say after working with the domino for a while, it is an amazing tool. Um, but I kind of think that sometimes there's this misconception that if you just own a cool fancy tool, then you'll be able to build everything with it. And of course, I think and everybody can build anything eventually. But the domino, just like every other tool, takes a lot of practice and skill and there's a lot of you know craftsmanship that goes into mastering all of the cool tools not just owning them now this darker mdf oils up really nice and actually goes great with walnut so i just left the inside of the cabinet the bare mdf except for the edges the edges of you know mdf always look terrible and absorb a tremendous amount of oil so i did uh, kind of edge band those with some pieces of walnut and it looked really pretty for the finish, we used Danish oil, and then after that sat for several days, and we put some paste wax over it, and it gave it just a really nice, deep, natural look. Prior to working with this walnut, I never really understood the color difference between air-dried walnut and kiln-dried, and just how deep and more kind of reds and oranges there are in the air-dried walnut. So this stuff is really very beautiful. We installed some soft close hinges and then we installed it to the walls and filled it up. I used some little clips uh, specifically for the tonal accessories and it's pretty much good to go. So I'm very happy with this project and we both learned a tremendous amount with our first time using the domino as well as the vacuum press. Um, I will definitely have more veneer uh, videos coming. So if you are enjoying my work, please like and subscribe and follow along as I hopefully continue to learn and grow.